turn with me in your words to begin the word to 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 11. And then stay with me in honor of the reading of God's word. And we are going to look at the topic. The, we're going to speak on the topic. It won't work any other way. It won't work any other way. That's the title of my message today. It won't work any other way. So let's read from the scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 11 says, For the foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. For other foundation can no man lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Bow your heads with me. Father, I thank you today for your word. I thank you today, God, because your word is rich and reading. God, I pray today that you would open the eyes of our understanding that we might see and our ears that we might hear and our hearts that we may understand what the word of God is saying to us today. And then as we understand that we might go about the process of applying it to our life so that our life, God, can reflect and be conformed to the image of Christ Jesus. I thank you, God, for all of these people, these that have come from other churches. God, we thank you so much for having them come into our house, and we love them so much because they love those that we love. When they love those and care about those that we love and care about, so... As a united family in Christ, God, we love them and we thank you for their presence today. And I pray a special ministry to them in this hour. Father, bless the word as you always do and let the Holy Spirit speak to us and we will give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and you may be seated. Paul is here. I, I'm talking today on it won't work any other way. And what I'm going to tell you this, this morning is not going to be quite like one would expect if you just looked at my title. Um, because I'm going to show you something from the Word of God. Maybe you knew, and if you did know, wonderful. And if you didn't know, I want you to be able to apply it to your life. And I want you to understand today some things about the Word of God that maybe you didn't know before. Paul is here saying to the church of Corinth, don't allow any other doctrine. Uh, don't allow any man to attach themselves to you. Well, what's up, girls? Haven't seen you all in a while. Miss Harper, Miss Wilson, so nice to have you today. And so uh, there they work with me down in Winston-Salem. You know, you all remember them. They're wonderful, wonderful people. He said, don't attach yourself to any other doctor. Don't attach yourself to any other man. That's what he's talking about as he says, some say you're a Paul, some say you're of Apollos. Don't attach yourself to any other man. There is but one foundation that has been laid and taught for you to follow. And that is the foundation that was taught, preached, and presented by Jesus Christ. That tells me that when the writer of the book of Hebrews wrote these words from Hebrews chapter 8, but now hath he ordained a more excellent, been ordained with a more excellent ministry, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. There is no foundation that man can lay that could bring us more benefits for living. Now watch what I'm saying to you, because this is where I'm going today. There is no foundation that can be laid that can bring us more benefits for living than what Jesus has already done. What Christ has done for us has given us the foundation of benefits for living. We look at life and we look at the cross as a benefit for dying. We think of the cross as a benefit for dying because there Jesus saved us and gave us eternal life. And in essence, what Jesus did was give us the benefit of death and life eternal. But really... Eternal life, as I've said before, began the moment you accepted Christ. From that moment on, your eternal life began. So there was a span between death and eternal life. And that span is what we call life. You see that? There's a span between the time you die and the time between when you enter into eternal life that we refer to as life or living. And it is the benefits for living that Christ has given us. Everything in the Word of God, not, not, not one thing that is preached in the Word of God, transcends.
transcends those three elements. There is a benefit that Christ has given you to live. To live. To become. Listen to how the word put it. The word said that you would be translated. The word said that you would be transformed. And then the word said that you would be conformed. All three of those words tell us that from the moment you receive Christ and the moment you die and the moment you enter into eternal life, there are benefits in all three areas. There's the benefit of living. There's the benefit of dying because in dying you get the benefit of eternal life. But it all begins at the moment that you accept Christ as your Savior. It all begins to change for you when you realize that what Jesus really did was give you the benefits of living. Now watch this. In life you live, but in death you live. Because the life of living in Christ in the natural, when you get to the moment of death, will spring you into eternal life. It's a benefit of living that Christ has offered you. He hasn't offered you the benefit of a life after death. He has offered you the benefits of living. Now I want you to see that. The Amplified Verse has said, But as it is now, as it now is, He has acquired a priestly ministry, which is as much superior and more excellent than the old, as the covenant, the agreement of which He is the mediator, the arbitrator, the agent, is superior and more excellent, because it is enacted and rested upon a more important, sublimer, higher, and nobler promise. That promise to you is that you have a covenant. There's only one way. You can't do it another way. You have a foundation that is laid in Christ. That is a covenant of promise. And it is a covenant of promise for living. For living a life to be translated, transformed, and conformed into the image of His dear Son, Christ Jesus. Now, Jesus had acquired a priestly ministry which was superior to the old. He is the superior because He is, now watch this now, He is the superior, we're getting ready to celebrate Easter and I want you to see this. He is the superior priest, the superior mediator, because He was the superior representative and substitute all by Himself. He represented God and He represented you. He was your substitute on the cross and there as the representative and as the substitute He died to give you the benefits of living. This is what the word said in 2 Corinthians 5, 21. Said, For he, you were dead in sin but Christ died so that you might become you were dead but you became the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He took on your sin, was your substitute. He was the Son of Man, and He was the Son of God. And there as the Son of Man and the Son of God, He hung on a tree and became the substitute whereby He might become your sin and you might become the righteousness of God. There is no other foundation whereby you can get to glory and into eternal life unless you understand that what the cross did for you was that the cross took the Son of Man, you, and the Son of God put them together and the shed blood of Jesus that fell on the ground commingled the blood of man and of God so that you might become the righteousness of God. There is no other foundation that can be laid that makes any reference to the doctrine of Christ other than Christ died for sinners of which I am chief. Glory to God. Does that resonate with any of you? Christ died for you. And the blood of Christ made the blood covenant that separated you when you believed in Him and gave you the opportunity to begin the living benefits of what Christ did for you. Now, the living benefits, I just talked about that one. I want to go on to this one right here. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 6, 2 and verse 6. Very critical what I'm about to say as you understand. I want to back up. Christ died on the cross for you. 
He made you the righteousness of God. He did something for you you could not do for yourself. As a matter of fact, He exchanged your sin and gave you His righteousness. See that? He exchanged your lost condition and gave you a condition of heirship and sonship and daughtership to God. Now what a blessing. It's the benefits of living. And once you understand that and you begin to accept what Christ has done for you, we, we say, well, you got saved, glory to God, and now you're living, and, and, and God is going to give you eternal life. And this is what I say about that. God is going to give every man, woman, boy, and girl who believes in Him eternal life. There is no question about that. You are going to live eternally. But... God's also going to give the unregenerated and the unsaved eternal life too. No man is going to skip eternity. Nobody. From nowhere, by no means, will skip eternity. He will either skip eternity, they'll have eternity in heaven and live with God and walk the streets of gold and worship the Lamb, or he will live eternally in a state of damnation, in a state of problem and trouble and in a state where he is totally forever separated from God. You're going to live eternally so there has to be something more than just saying we received eternal life. Because the worst hellion that dies without Christ receives eternal life also. So there has to be something in this. And that something begins with the benefits of living. The benefits of now. Now look at Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 6. It said, And He hath raised us up together, and made us sit together, giving us joint seating with Him in the heavenly sphere, by virtue of our being in Christ the Messiah or the Anointed One. Now the King James Version says it like this. The King James Version said that He has let us sit in heavenly places. Well, I begin to meditate on that term. What is a heavenly place? How do we get to a heavenly place? We don't go there yet in the flesh. But the Bible said that He has raised us up. The Bible said that you who were once dead in sins and trespasses have He quickened. When did He do that? When you got to heaven? No. He did that now. He quickened you who were dead in trespasses and sins now. So if He quickened you in the now out of your trespasses and sins, then He also had to do something else in the now or Paul would have not been telling you the truth. What did He do? He raised you up and made you sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now, if the quickening happened to you in the now, you accepted Jesus Christ, got saved, your life changed, you begin to be a follower after Christ, an imitator of Christ, then why would we think it's so far out of left field for us to be transferred and trans... Now, listen to what Colossians 1.13 said, for He has translated you out of the kingdom of darkness and into the kingdom of His dear Son. So there has to be something going on in life. There has to be something happening now. There has to be a place now. There has to be. Because when we got saved, we know our life changed. What did the Bible Paul said? We became from the old man to a new man. We took off the old garments of poverty. We took off the old garment of sin and we put on the new garment of righteousness. Paul said we went from an old man to a... When did that happen? Well, does it happen in... Now, watch it now. Does it happen in heaven? Can't. Because we know heaven is a place where only those that believe for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. But the very next verse says, he that believeth not is damned, so it did not happen in heaven. Had to happen here. Had to happen in the land of the living. Something had to happen here that changed us. We were translated from one kingdom to another, not when we die, 
Not when we go to heaven. Not when God, God receives us into the portals of glory. But something was happening that took man from his sin and quickened him and made him a child of God that Paul would turn around in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 6 saying, You have been raised up together. And made you sit together in heavenly places. Well, then I begin to ask the question, what in the world are the heavenly places? Why would there be such a place? Is there a heavenly place heaven? Is the heavenly place the place that I go when I die? Well, based on what I'm reading in Ephesians chapter 2, it is not the place I go when I die. So there has to be another place. Then it came to me what it was. The heavenly place for living. The heavenly place for living in Christ Jesus that He has raised you up to. Those heavenly places reflect our position in the covenant. Our place that God has put us in based on His covenant on better promises by a better ministry, yeah. by a better mediator. Our position is the covenant that God has given us between He and between us. Now I want you to understand this. Now listen to me very carefully. We look at the cross and we say, thank God Jesus died for us. I want to give you a revelation on that. Jesus died for God. Because God needed a man. A man that would be a representative and a substitute that could legally go to the cross. It had to be a man. And then it had to be the Son of God who could go to the cross and there die so that God could legally destroy the works of the devil and re-enter back into the spirit of man so that the spirit of man could come back into communion with God. That's why he did that. Yes, we got the benefit of it. Yes, we got the benefit of heaven. We got the benefit of living. We got the benefit of eternal life. We got the benefit of the knowledge of Him in Christ Jesus. But Jesus went to Calvary so that God could find and have, not find, but have a means whereby He could re-enter the righteousness of God back into you. That's why He went there. He went there to be the sacrifice that the world would look at and the devil would know that the Son of God and the Son of Man have co-mingled on the cross and what He did to Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden would be destroyed by the work of a man. That's why the Bible said in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, had He known, He would have killed everybody trying to kill Jesus. Had He thought that in the cross there would be a man. And that man would be so much man and so much God that when his blood fell to the ground, they would form an everlasting covenant. And the covenant between God and man would never be broken. It would be everlasting. It would be a perfect covenant made by a perfect man who was the perfect mediator, who was the perfect son of God, but yet the perfect son of man. And there he would be to ever, ever be eternally bound to you, Rita. To me. See, that's the beauty of the cross. If we look at it and think He did it all for us. He did it all so that they could have us. So that they could redeem us and buy us back. But the cross was God's plan. How do we know that? Because the Word of God said that it was coming as early as Genesis chapter 3. And the prophets talked about it all the way through the Old Testament until the Word of God declares that there was one coming whose shoes were, I'm not worthy to latch, but He'll come in power and He'll come in glory. And Jesus said, And I, if I be lifted up, I will then draw all men unto me. See, what God did was make a way for you to live eternally in the land of the living. What a wonderful thing to know. I have a covenant with God. My heavenly place is in the covenant. My heavenly place is to understand that what God promised me in the Word of God are not just random, 
promises that say, I'll supply all you need. Well, now, well, now if you need some bread, I won't be like the man that knocked on the door late at night and, and say to you, do you not know how late it is? I, I can't be worried about how late it is and if you've got guests because I'm asleep and my kids are in bed. Uh, but if you need bread, I'm a good God and I, I'll give you a little bit of bread. And then look here. If, 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 you, if you cut yourself, I'll give you a little bit of healing because, I, I, you know, I, that's a promise that I made. Now, now, I can't say that my promise will always work if it's something really big, but if you've got a paper cut, bless God, come on. I take care of the paper cut. Huh? The covenant of God is not, now watch it now, is not dependent upon the size of the need because it's not dependent upon you at all. Huh? What do you mean? He said, it's flat by me. He did. But it is not dependent upon you at all. There's nothing about this book that depends on you. Your part of the book is to believe and walk by faith and not by sight. Your part of the book is to simply trust in what the covenant maker has said to you. If the cross was about God, if Jesus died to satisfy the sacrifice that God needed to get the devil's work destroyed so that he could re-enter himself back into you, then why would you think that the promises of God are indigenous or generic to you? They're indigenous and generic to everybody because every man that believes is under the covenant. Every man that believes is accepting of the promises. Every man that believes has nothing left out to him in the promise of the covenant of God. Every man operates under a better covenant. Every man operates by a better promise. Every man, every situation. Now we know why Paul said in Philippians chapter 2 that every name that is named and everything that is a thing would bow the knee to the name of Jesus Christ because he was the establisher, the developer, and God was the designer of a covenant that covered every weak vessel. Now we understand why Paul said, when I am weak, you are strong. Paul said that because he was talking in covenant talk. Paul said that because he was saying something about a covenant. And that covenant was a covenant that covered everything. It didn't cover the small things and leave the big things out. It didn't leave cancer alone because cancer was too big for God, in other words. It didn't leave childbirth alone because childbirth was too big for God. It didn't leave anything out that God has covered in the covenant towards the weaker vessel. You and I were the weaker vessel. You and I were the ones that were lost and undone. You and I were the ones whose spirit had to be quickened. You and I were the ones who the covenant had to be established on the inside of us, but yet we do not understand the covenant of agreement. We do not understand the covenant of contract because in the East or Western world we make a contract, and if we don't like it, I was reading just yesterday where a guy that I've always thought a good bit of named Tony Smith got fired after two years on his contract. They just cut the contract. They said, we're not doing this anymore. Tubby, thanks for all you've done, but you got to go now. But what about the contract? All oh, that doesn't really mean anything. But in God's economy, the contract, the contract, the covenant is everything. The covenant and the contract is the thing he cut with the fathers. There are 15 of those in the Word of God. And God is righteous and faithful and fulfills every jot and every tittle of every contract that he has ever done and he fulfills them with you whenever you choose to understand and live in what God has provided for you. Now I want to show you this. Ephesians 2.8 Here watch now. Ephesians 2.8 says it's a gift. Now watch it now. It says he gave it to you. What did he give you? He gave you a covenant. A perfect covenant. He gave you a way that you could be totally covered. 
He gave you a way that you could be totally in Him. And totally Him in you. He gave you a way that was free. We look at the cross and we look at what Jesus said about the free God. Jesus said in John 3, 16 about for God so loved the world that He gave. And we realize that's a free gift. But what is it a free gift of? Now I want you to understand today it's a free gift of the benefits of living. Because you as the weaker vessel are covered by a covenant. By a covenant. By an agreement. By a contract. Whose builder and maker, designer, developer, and the one who causes it to come to pass is not you. It is God and God alone. And you can lay no other foundation other than the foundation that has already been laid. What God has decreed will be done and it will prosper thereunto. He sent it. Now look at Mark chapter 5. Because in Mark chapter 5, I'm going to show you something you never saw before. <laughs> Mark chapter 5 and Mark Matthew 19. Now I believe it's Luke 8. Tell us a story about a woman. And the woman had the issue of blood. Do you remember her? She had an issue of blood for 12 years. She had been to every doctor that she could go to. Now I want you to bear in mind that this. She was a Jew. She had, now listen to this now. She had the covenant of Noah, the covenant of Abraham, the covenant of Isaac, the covenant of David. She had the 14 covenants of peace, 14 covenants out of the New Testament, out of the Old Testament. They had to live on it. They could live on it. And all he said to them out of those covenants was, when he told the Mosaic covenant of the law, he said, if you will, I will. And for your obedience, you'll get my answer to what you need. And then he got over to Abraham and he said, Abraham, I will bless you. And I'll bless everyone that blesses you. Wherever you go, I'll bless you. And I'll bless your people. And I'll make your people great. Then he went over to David and he said to David that you would have the everlasting covenant. You, the king, would come through you. And so that he did. This woman had all the covenant. Do not think that the children of Israel don't know the word of God. Don't think they don't know the Old Testament because they do and they did. But here was a woman who had all of these covenants working for her. All of these covenants in her favor. But yet 12 years she had been to every doctor that she could possibly think of. Everyone that she could possibly get to until it had taken her obviously to a position and a point of poverty. <coughs> And here this woman was, Jesus coming along, and the, the Jairus' daughter was ill, and he said, I'll go to you, and the press was in and around him, and the woman said these words. Watch it now. i got to touch him. i got to get to him. i got to be able to put my hand on him, because he's the only one I've seen that can do the thing that I need. And that's evil. Now, the story has been identified by faith preachers forever. And we've jumped and shouted whenever we heard them sing the song, Reach Out and Touch the Lord. Oh, reach out and touch the Lord as He passes by. And we think that if we can get to church and, and, and we can get to a good preacher, and we can let him preach a little while and let him touch us or us get to him and lay hands on and that, 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 that's going to solve everything. And we've jumped and shouted through the years about this. We praise God for her nerve and we've said that if you're going to get anything from God, you've got to have the nerve. You've got to be able to press. You've got to be able to pray. You've got to be able to seek. You've got to be able to give. You've got to be able to go. You've got to be able to do the Great Commission. It's, it's all. We, we preach this word that said if you just work a little harder, you'll be able sometime to reach out and touch Him. We've jumped when we heard the story of the bordering blue. And we've been preached the Word of God. We know that the border in blue represents the Word of God. 
And in the Word of God, it represented the fact that there was a covenant of healing from the Word of God. And we've shouted because she reached out and touched the Lord and got to the covenant of God. And that's a good thing. Nothing wrong with that. Because in the Word is healing to you. In the Word is freedom to you. In the Word is salvation to you. In the Word is redemption to you. In the Word is peace to you. In the Word is joy to you. All those things are there. But even with all that information, we missed some very key things about this scripture. We missed it. Let me go back. Look at verse 34. In verse 34, he makes a statement to her that says it won't work any other way. That's what he's saying to her right there. It won't work if there is no foundation you can lay that will be greater than this one. There will be nothing you can do that's greater than, 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 than what I'm about to say to you. You can't lay a foundation of works. You can't lay a foundation of giving. You can't lay just a foundation of prayer. You can't lay just a foundation of blind faith. Because there, this woman had been in a position where she had done pressed in, reached out to the Word, reached out to the doctor, recognized that the man that she was about to touch was the true man of God from the lineage of David, that his borders in blue actually meant something, but then Jesus said something to her that I want you to see. In verse 34, And he said unto her, Daughter, that hit me like someone dropped an airplane on my head. Because it was at that moment that I understood something that I had never seen before in the Word of God. When he said to her daughter, he said to her, woman of the covenant, daughter of God, you have reached out to me and you have been healed. Great is your faith, but faith in what? Jesus did not say that faith in him. He said, daughter, thy faith has made you whole. Daughter of the covenant. Daughter of the promise of God to every man, woman, boy, and girl who will seek me Daughter of the covenant, it is because you are a daughter, a child, a co-heir, and in Christ Jesus you are filled with all the promises of God that are in me through the covenant daughter, and that faith in that covenant promise of who I am and what I will do and what I have promised you is the reason that you are made whole today. That's why... There's a covenant, ladies and gentlemen, that is for you, that is better even than the old one, because God sent Christ to Calvary so that He could be the sacrifice, so that He could be the substitute, so that He could be the satisfier, so that He could be the sanctifier, so that heaven could be open to you, so that as the cross and the blood accomplished the covenant for you, so that you as a daughter, as a son, as a child of God, as a co-heir in Christ, could live forevermore in the benefits of the life provided by the covenant of Almighty God. He said, daughter, daughter, my daughter, you're not just, now watch this now, when she went to the doctor, she went in and he referred to her as Miss So-and-so is my what? Patient. Because when you go to the doctor, that's what they say about you. They say, you're, you're my patient. That's who you are. You, I'm practicing on my patient. Isn't that what they say? Huh? They say the doctor practices medicine on his patient. 
So when she went to the doctors for 12 years, they looked her in the eye and they called her a patient. And she was very patient for 12 years. Very patient for 12 years. Very, very, now watch it now, consistent to the point that it cost her everything she had. Now watch me now. But when she went to Jesus, he did not call her a patient. He turned to her and saw her through the covenant. And in the covenant, she was a daughter. He looked at her and said, as God sees you, he sees you well. As God sees you, He sees you whole. As God sees you, He sees you perfect. How do we know that? Because the Word of God said that Jesus Christ, the resurrected King, is in a perfect condition. He is the perfect, was the perfect sacrifice. Now He is the perfect, exalted Lord whose name is above every name, whose name is above everything, who heaven stands up and exalts because He is perfect in all that He does. And Paul said that you are in Christ Jesus, so you must be a daughter and a son of perfection. Can't get away from that. Can't get over. Can't get under it. Can't get through it. Can't get beyond it. How did you get perfect? It's a gift. How do we know that? Because Paul said so in Ephesians chapter 2. How did we get there? Because the Spirit of God has quickened us. What did we exchange for our sin? For His righteousness. How do we do all that? It's a design of God. His ways are not our ways. His ways are way beyond our ways. But I want you to know His ways are being revealed to us according to Paul's writing in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 that the Holy Spirit is revealing. What is He revealing to you today? He's revealing your position in God as a daughter and as a son. Now watch this because this gets better, I think. Look at verse 34 again. Verse 34 has really got a lot in it. First of all, there was a daughter, so she was a member of the covenant. She was one covered. She was no longer a patient. She was no longer just someone coming to me of whom I was going to say, do this, take, as mama says to me and all the time, take two of these and call me in the morning. Huh? No, I'm not holding out my hand. Now watch it now. For you to give me something. I didn't hold out my hand, little woman with the issue of blood, for you to give me something as her doctors had. That's a significant concept in this Mark chapter 5 and Matthew chapter 9. That the doctors of the world and the people of the world were taking from her. But she got something from the Father because of her relationship, because of her communion, because of her union, and because of her fellowship in Christ Jesus through the Holy Ghost that automatically and immediately dried up her issue of blood. It came out of the covenant. And then he says these words to her. Watch what the verse says. I faith had made thee whole. Now watch this. Go in peace. Go in peace. We look at that and we think that he means go and just be happy you're healed. Go and just be glad that you had the chance to touch me. Go and be glad that you had the chance to recognize the borders in blue and say, well, those borders represent the word of the healing and I'm so, I'm so glad now that you can go in peace knowing that what you knew about me was actually true. Because what you knew about me caused you to be healed. 
And the woman turns around and says, yeah, well, I'm healed, glory to God. I'm going to just go and, and, and take, take to myself the knowledge that what God said he would do, he did because I have done it and now I'm healed and I'm leaving. I don't have to spend any more money. And, and, and look here, I'm glad he called me a daughter because that endeared me to him and I like that. And so, well, it made me feel better. And now I'm healed. My blood isn't flowing anymore. I feel better about myself. The man Jesus called me a daughter. So I'm going to walk in peace, glory to God. And she got about five steps and all the world will probably say, do it like they do to you. You ain't healed. <laughs> huh? You ain't well. What makes you think you're well? Well, he told you that. But you know, <laughs> healings don't always last. It don't always that we'll just, here's the big one. Let's just wait and see. Huh? Anybody ever say that to you? Let's just hold on a minute now. Don't go around telling everybody. Uh, it, it, it just may not hold out. may not work for you. But that's not what he said. He used the term daughter and said, daughter, you're in covenant. She knew that. Then he turned around and said, go now in peace. She was in the covenant by being a child of God. She was in the covenant by being in the peace covenant of God that mom taught us from Ephesians chapter 54 the other night. That the cross will never pass away. That what Jesus did on the cross and what God accomplished in the cross and the peace covenant will never, never pass away. And then the Bible said in, in Isaiah 54 that, that though you would be in the middle of a storm, though you would be in the middle of the mountains falling, though you would be in the middle of trial and adversity, there would be a peace covenant that would never, ever leave you. And we never hear about that woman again. We never hear anything more about her. She is never referred to again. So the connotation is, the message to you and I is, that she went on to not only live in the daughter as a daughter of the covenant, but to live in the peace provided by the covenant to every place she went and everyone she came in touch to and everyone that was around her, she was at peace with them. Peace with her world. Peace from oppression. Peace from disease. Peace from anything on the outside. This woman got a twofold blessing of the covenant of God and we have missed it for all of these years talking about her faith. Her faith was great, but it was the covenant message of God that gave her what she needed, when she needed, and then left her with a covenant to ensure that she would keep it. The covenant, ladies and gentlemen, you can't lay any other foundation. Can't do it any other way. This little woman came through it. And when she got it, he gave her the peace covenant to keep it. Bow your heads and close your eyes. How are you trying to get to God? What program or plan are you using? To try to get God. Are you doing 40 days of purpose? Are you doing 21 days of this? And 3 days of fasting? And 19 days of reading the word? What is it that you're doing? Because I'm going to share with you this morning. All of those things are not bad. Some of them will lead you in a doctrine that is another foundation. When all the time there has already been a covenant cut for you. There has already been a covenant that says to you, you're a child of the king. You're a daughter of the king. Your physical body is covered. He said, I am the God that heals you. Your physical body has already been covered in the covenant. He said your, your, your financial self has already been covered in the covenant. He will supply all of your need according to His riches and glory. Everything has already been supplied for you as a daughter, as a son, as a co-heir, as a co-equal. And it's all been supplied in Christ for you 
All you have to do is to simply realize your covenant position and your covenant position is the covenant of more than an overcomer, ladies and gentlemen. You do not throw a punch. You do not die on the cross. You exchange your sin for His righteousness and now you are a covenant person that is covered, satisfied, taken care of, provided for, protected. God has compassion upon you and He is loyal to you because you're a daughter, a son. God. Now as you sit in that chair today, some of you had sickness going on on the inside of you. Some of you had needs, whatever that need may be. Some of you had needs that, that you need to recognize are covered in the covenant of God. And right there as you sit in that chair, some of you have mental and emotional needs that God is saying to you by the covenant of God, because you are a member of my covenant, because you have believed on me by faith, you have been given a gift, and the gift is the entrance into the eternal covenant that gives you the benefits for living. Forget not my benefits, my benefits, my benefits. The covenant of God covers you, heals you, gives you life, and gives you direction, and gives you a hope that is beyond anything you can imagine. All you have to do is realize you're in the covenant of God. Your faith has brought you into a covenant with God. And God is saying to you in, in His wonderful and majestic way, through my covenant be healed. It's already provided. Through my covenant be prospered. Through my covenant be forgiven. Through my covenant know that your past is the past that I have forgotten as far as the east is from the west. Through my covenant, know that I can make a man rich. I can lift a man up. I can put a man in favor. And I can also put a man down. Then after you've been healed, prospered, blessed, provided for, I can give you a covenant of peace so that you can go and be whole of thy plague. With every head bowed and every eye closed. Someone in this room say to me, Preacher, <coughs> I now know I live in a covenant with God. I now know that what God did for me in Christ Jesus married me to Him just like I am married to my wife. Married me to him just like I'm married to my wife. Married me to him. Gave me to him just like I'm a son to my mother and father. Married me, married me, married me, put me with him. And now we are in covenant as man and wife. And that covenant has given me the ability to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I am covered provided for, protected for. Someone raise your hand and say, I see that preacher. I see that preacher. I see the fact that I'm in covenant with God. Someone raise your hand and say, I see that preacher. I get that preacher. I honestly can see it today, preacher. I can see today that what God did for me was give me the covenant. And the covenant gave me all the pieces of hope, all the key pieces of healing. I see it today, preacher. Someone raise your hand and say to me, preacher, I, I, I have entered into the covenant of salvation with God. Say that, raise your hand, say that. I, I've entered into the covenant of salvation with God. I'm saved today. I've entered into that covenant. I've entered into that, 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 that great piece of protection. Now, if you've entered into the covenant of salvation, you've entered into the covenant of healing. You've entered into the covenant of prosperity. You've entered into the covenant of soul prosperity. You've entered into the covenant of emotional prosperity. You've entered into the covenant of inheritance in Christ Jesus. You've entered into that. You've been given that. He looks at you today and says, Son, Son, thy faith, your 
belief in me has made you whole. Daughter, your belief in me has made you whole. Daughter, your belief in me has solved the plague that is in you. Now, if you receive that, I want you to just sit right there and raise your hand. I received that today. I received healing in me today. I received relief. I received provision. I have been saved and it's a free gift to me, so I receive it today. I take it today and it belongs to me because I'm in the covenant of a better promise, promise made by a better mediator, a more excellent promise. I, I, I get it. It's mine. I receive it today. And today I say by the covenant of God that what God has promised me, I take it. Just like the little woman when he turned to her and said, Thy faith has made me whole. Are you going to operate in faith today? Are you simply going to take on what God has given you? Now then we've got to move on to the next part. Then are you going to go in peace? Are you going to go so that there's no more oppression? Are you going to go so that all of your family and children are taught of the Lord? Are you going to go so that there's no more fear? Are you going to go so that there's, there's no more terror? Are you going to go so that the covenant operating in you gives you peace in the outside world just as it has just given you peace in the inside world? Son, you've got peace. Son, you've got healing. Son, you've got the joy of the Lord living in you. Son, my covenant has given you both healing, prosperity, provision, and protection. And it has also given you peace with every place you go and everything, your, every place the sole of your foot touches. The covenant of peace surrounds you. Now as you sit with your eyes closed, having received the covenant of a son, Daughter, I want to ask you today, can you receive the covenant of peace so that you can do what Jesus said would be done when he said in verse 24 that you could be whole, whole, complete. And the word of God said you are complete in him. Complete to the measure of the stature of Christ Jesus. Now, if you're prepared to walk in the covenant of peace, now that you understand the covenant of provision, protection, prosperity, the covenant of compassion and loyalty, and the covenant of, of God to take care of you, for when you're weak, He's strong, but there's a covenant for you. Now are you ready to walk in the covenant of peace? If you're ready for that, I want you to stand to your feet. I want you to simply slip your hands towards heaven, and I want you to begin to thank God for the covenant of peace that's been given to you. <clears throat> the covenant of peace that's been given to you. There's no other way. There's, this thing won't work any other way, ladies and gentlemen. This thing won't happen any other way. It will only happen when you begin to realize there's a covenant made for you. There's a covenant of healing, prosperity, peace. There's a covenant for you and you can live in it every day of your life. And it won't work any other way because there can be no other foundation laid other than that has been laid. And that that has been laid was laid by Jesus Christ. Won't work any other way. 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 Now those of you that today the Spirit of God has ministered to you in your body, I want you right where you stand to simply say what the the covenant has done for you today. I, I've been healed today of such and such. I've been delivered today of such and such. I've been made free today of such and such. I've been forgiven of my past. I, I've been set free of whatever it is that the covenant has set you free of today. And then when we get done here, when you do that, I'm going to declare to you the same thing Jesus said. And I'm going to say to you, your faith has made you well. Your faith has made you well. Your faith has made you whole. Your faith has made you. Your faith has made you because you see the covenant. You receive the covenant. You believe in the covenant. You know the covenant was made after a better promise. And I take it to myself. 
And you know that Jesus Christ is the mediator, the high priest. The one who can be touched with the feelings of your infirmity. But is sitting at the right hand of God saying to you today, I died for that covenant and I'm giving it to you. Do you receive that today? Do you receive that in yourself today? <clears throat> if you receive it, say amen. amen. Say amen. amen. And then I'm going to say these words to you just as Jesus said. Because in Christ, the greater works that I'm going to do is not by what Mike Springston does, but it's by how God sees me. And God sees me today in Christ. God sees me today in Christ just like He sees you. God sees Christ in you, ladies and gentlemen, the hope of glory. And the covenant that covers you is all of God, none of you. And you're running to Him now, and just as Jesus said to the little woman with the issue of blood, He said, Daughter, and I say, Daughter and Son, thy faith hath made thee whole. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Now listen to the covenant of peace. Then Jesus looked at her and said, Go in peace. Go in the covenant of my peace. And be whole of whatever is your plague. Now that's a simple covenant, ladies and gentlemen. That's a simple thing. That's a simple thing. It doesn't cause us to jump, shout, and run the aisles. It doesn't have to. It's not predicated on your ability to shout. It's predicated on your ability to receive of the promise of God just like this little woman did. Be healed. Go in peace and be whole of whatever's bothering. Three simple statements that every child of God can cling to. Not only cling to, but can trust in. And know that the God of heaven is standing behind your sonship your daughtership, your faith, your healing, and your peace. Amen? 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 Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. Now, we're going to close. Now, I'm going to tell you. Now, we come to the living part. We come to the living part. Because now you have to go out that door and live it. You have to live under the covenant. You have to live in peace. Sometimes you've got to turn off the noise that goes on around you. You know what I'm talking about? You've got to turn off the doubt because the doubt will bring fear. You've got to turn off your brain at night because at night terror will come. But there's a covenant of peace. So what are you going to do? You're going to rely on the covenant of peace. You're going to refer to the covenant of peace. You're going to remind God of the covenant of peace. You're going to remind God of the fact that you're His son. You're His daughter. You're His child. And He's provided for you in the covenant. So I'm going to lay my head down, take a sweet night's sleep, bless God. And I'm going to wake up tomorrow and I'm going to say to myself, my expression, you are well from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. Everything from here to here is well. I'm a blessed man of God because I live under the covenant of healing, of prosperity, provision, protection compassion and loyalty and then I live under peace glory to God every place I go is at peace everything I touch is at peace hallelujah including me I'm in total peace huh amen, amen. alright let's pray and be dismissed mom why don't you dismiss us in prayer Father in the mighty name of Jesus we receive this message from the word of God today out of the mouth of the Holy Spirit Bless these people as they leave this place and let them never be the same again. Holy Spirit, deal with us until we can understand that the blood of the covenant that cannot be obliterated or annulled or disannulled. Come, Lord Jesus, and uh, I, everything we do, make us think differently, make us speak differently, cause us to be a different people out there in the world, be in everything we say. And help us to be conscious and well aware that we are a daughter of the Son of God. And help us to act like it in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless everyone that's come this way. 
bring difference to our activities and our actions and our speech. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you. Amen. 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 God.